it's good to see you guys. The film, uh, a lot of positive things off of uh, Saturday. I think the the wide receiver perimeter blocking. You know, you look at like at R.J. Snead and Tyquan Thornton and Drew Estrada. I, I thought it was just a, a another level that they were able to get to, and I think that it made all the difference, especially in the start of the second half. You know, those quarterback runs, the crack and load schemes, and so proud of them. I think it's been it's been honestly a long time coming, and to um, to execute that and in big moments when we needed it most. Really proud of them. It's really good to see. I think um, the uh, defensive line and their pass rush and their the energy that they brought and their ability to execute and um, have awareness. We talk about a four-man um, pass rush working as a unit. I had a quarterback trap. Not, you know, four guys working as independent contractors, uh, but, um, you know, someone pushing the A-gap, someone containing off this edge, right, and uh, using their partner as an aid in their own endeavor, I think, was a huge step in the right direction. Uh, still room for improvement there, but happy for um, the additions um, that we made to that, that area of our game. And then, you know, I think just think on the sidelines, the, the, the energy that we brought, the energy that we were able to catch from our, our fans, I think it just makes a huge difference and just really shows how important that is to our team and um, shows how, how, how big of a deal it is for us to create that on our own on the road uh, here coming up this week. With that, I'll take any questions you guys got. Yeah, Dave. What kind of challenge is it? Uh, didn't sound like. Uh, anyway, what kind of challenge is it facing a hot Kansas State team on the road? Um, very well coached. I think offensive line are uh, maulers, physical. I think there's a lot of similarities in our teams. Um, I think we are much more of a zone style. They do run zone. They run a lot more gap scheme though. They get into big people and um, run powers and um, with various pullers, a lot of times more than two um, or more than one rather. And so they um, they move people and create seams and there's a lot of gaps and angles become an issue. Um, so number one is the physicality they bring. I think the quarterback is um, can move around, doesn't move around as much as he, he was prior. I think is a, is probably a better thrower than he was prior. He's sitting in the pocket more and and um, going through progressions and thread needles and and all of it. I think finding dead areas and zones and taking advantage. I think um, their running back and their receivers. They you know they've got guys. Their their leading um, receivers for their team are are short, quick twitch, explosive, mismatches in space, and so. Um, you know, the tighter you get to them, the more it's a one-on-one -on -one game and the more it becomes, you know, who's the matchup on that guy because it can be a mismatch. And they've got, they've got a receiver with really good length uh, that that's a, um, um, gives them value on special teams as well that is, a, is someone that we have to be aware of for the deep ball. And so I think they're a complete team and they're playing with a lot of belief. Um, I think defensively, you know, they made the switch to a 3-3-5, three, three, and so very similar style to Iowa State. And um, they're keeping um, throws in front of them, right? They're uh, getting run-throughs with linebackers. I think D-line-wise, they're causing a lot of havoc, um, a lot of tackles for losses and sacks. And so it is, it is going to be a big test for us. I feel what we've gone through before – has given us the ability to pass this test, but it is certainly a test. Bryce Cherry, Waco Trib. Dave, uh, the win the other day against Oklahoma really put y'all right in the mix for that potential Big 12 championship game. Uh, obviously, you guys were thinking about tiebreaker scenarios if that came about. How much do you think about scenarios of, of you know that big picture stuff? Do you have a like a guy that coach that's just working on – Hey, this is what we got to do if you know if this comes up. We'll talk about that going into a game. I think similar with, you know, are we going to um, 
fake a uh, pun? Are we gonna um, go for a block? Um, are we gonna um, uh, sneak on sides or any of those things? And I think it goes into play that way. So there's kind of a time and a place for that. There's a fair amount of coaches that help with that. Um, but I think, you know, outside of that one particular meeting and or, you know, that circumstance come up in a game, we're just so focused on on the task at hand. You know, I think last week there's a fair amount of um, events that were getting in the way of, uh, you know, the event of the week. And so um, it's probably a little bit different than most. But I think for, for this week, um, just with uh, the improvement that we can make uh, not being at home and um, – you know, for us to take the next step as a team, I think all the focus is on what we can control and, um, you know, what we can execute. You focused a lot last week on the pass rush and needing that to be better. Um, you kind of put it on your own shoulders in the press conference on last Monday to go into OU's game and to see that you guys from the very first drive, got out there, got a lot of pressure on that quarterback, and even had them looking to go back to their other quarterback throughout that game. How well improved was that unit, and what are you looking forward to them as they move on into this week against Kansas State? I uh, appreciate the question. I give a lot of, I give all the credit really to the our our linemen and just their willingness to um, to grow. I think you know, I think the. The growth there was difficult because I think there was a style before where you were rushing the passer all the time and then defending the run on the way to rushing the passer and then to to pull back the curtain on that and to say, you know what, we're going to defend the run. And this is what it takes to defend the run. And you got to get hit in the face. and You got to do, you know, all these things. And then, you know, hey, we also have to rush the passer while we're doing that. I think, you know, that is, that is probably a pill. And so I think um, – to be able to, to to swallow that and to uh, learn and grow from that, I think is a, a full on credit to them. I think Dennis done a great job, you know, motivating them. I think uh, for us to continue to improve in that area is going to be um, not only uh, true passing downs, but play action pass. I think there wasn't a ton of that in this last game, um, and the times that we we did get that, we're still. Um, we still can be better in terms of affecting the quarterback. A lot of play action pass here coming up. And so very similar to our offense again, and some of the play action passes and the two man routes and all of it, the beaters that come. And so we have to be able to play the run and transition to pass. And you know, it's gonna be a big emphasis this week. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Dave, um, Abram switching from linebacker. I know he'd played running back before, but has he been more than you expected? And have you seen him kind of develop into Maybe that all around back. You know, he he has continued to improve. I think you know when I when I think of Abram, I think of um, you know making that move in spring, and I th and, and just you know he would lower his shoulder and and um, you know I think sometimes with the wide zone, it's sometimes it's not clean. You know the spaces in between the gaps, and so um, things are moving fast. Guys are D linemen are running to recapture a gap or maybe there's an old lineman that hasn't gained leverage that he needs and so the edges look like they're cut off and you know there is there is an ability a patience and almost a willingness that hey I can get hit here and I've got to be able to continue to press the ball to get the movement over the top to then force a one step cut and vertical go and a lot of times it's go into something that ain't clear that's not clean and I think there's guys that, that have a knack for doing that. Um, you know, another way of saying that is that they're willing to run into a wall, you know. And I think there's other guys that it has to be clean. Like, where is the gap? Is that – so that's the gap. Is that going to get any bigger? You know, it's all these things. And so I think with Abram, man, he can hit those walls. And, um, you know, on the other end of it, he's delivering punishment uh, and, um, you know, giving energy to our team on the sideline. And so – that's been, you know, his improvement in blocking and his improvement in receiving has only aided um, the ability. Whereas earlier in the year, some of the some of the things that we were moving people in and out, I think on both sides, I think with Ebner, there's a lot of improvement on his end as well. That either guy could do either job, and it's a testament to both of them. 
uh, Steve Cook, Sikkim Sports. Uh, Gary talked a lot during his presser uh, after the game about wanting to run more. Are y'all planning on taking even more advantage of his running capability? Um, yeah, I appreciate that question. I think for for Gary, I, you know, you go back to our season and some of the the uh, just for our, for our defense, some of the um, quarterbacks that we've struggled with, right, in uh, not having a quarterback trap and letting quarterbacks out and converting on a third down or, um, you know, uh, moving the ball on a on a um, a called quarterback run, and and we would come back and look at you know. Um, this particular quarterback did a great job of doing that versus us, and we got to get better. And here's all these things, but then we we would go, you know, Gary can do that as good or better, and and then it became like, why isn't he? You know, and I think it, and you know, I think the final piece to that was just trying to be perfect, trying to, uh, you know, to be the thrower number one, right, and not be the guy that's out of the pocket running and everything and using legs, but using arms and using using minds, and then I think once. Once there was a, um, once that was in a comfortable space, the ability to really weaponize the legs and be physical and deliver punishment and to be intentional about falling forward and taking guys forward with you, I think has been all the difference in this last game. And it really started, you know, a week ago today in um, Monday's practice, just his finishing and his intentionality when the ball was in his hands. And I think, you know, there is something about a ball carrier on offense. Um, finishing runs, right, of uh, contacts being made here, but the ball continues to go there, right? And whether there's O-linemen getting involved or the sideline sees it, right, and is there's something about that that's defining, that's really almost a signature. And, um, you know, it, it, it I think is a testament to the identity of the team, and I think Gary's – is um, is signing his name, Dave? Uh, Trail's been through a lot here. Fought back from injuries. A real leader for the team. Can you maybe describe just kind of what he's meant to this program? Yeah, I, everything. I think you know, um, on the field, off the field, I th the sacrifices he's made. The you know, um, selfless leader. Um, Terrell, you know, is the physical and tough guy, but he feels a lot, and he's got a great heart, and I think um, things really matter to him. Um, it's, it's more than lip service with him, and I think, you know, his growth and maturity um, almost has put him at the very beginning of this year, particularly I'm in another stratosphere of human being. Uh, there are certain guys on the team that just can't even understand how he can go about and do the things he does and treat people the way he treats and, and handle the ups and downs the way he does. And I think his ability to model that and then to have the patience to teach that, I think has made a big difference on the team. And, you know, uh, I've talked a lot about Trail about leaving a legacy, and um, you know that means a lot to him. His love of Baylor and just his uh, his love of this team. Really proud of Trail. Coach, on Saturday you talked a lot about you know whether you're playing Oklahoma or the bottom team in the conference. None of that should matter. What in practice do you need to see from your team so that on Saturday against Kansas State you know that they've taken that to heart? Uh, energy, edge, execution, you know, the energy to start the practice, uh, the energy um, during the practice. I think, I think focus has a lot to do with that. You know, I think, um, you know, the, the, the focus at the start of something is a uh, decision. I think the refocus is a skill, and so you have to train that throughout, right? If you lose your focus, get it back and get that centered so that the energy can flow. Um, you know, edge throughout the week. And so, you know, we have to be at our best. We're going to get everybody's best shot when we come to town 
that's going to be a, that's going to be a game. And so um, people want to see us lose, and we have to fight um, daily to make the right choices and do the little things right to where we are strengthening um, our standing. And then I think execution. I think when things are – I think complexity can hide effort. Complexity can hide, um, you know, focus and attention. Um, complexity can hide – energy i think when things are simple you have to just go out and do it and you got to do it with a certain amount of uh of uh of uh fever and um and energy and i think we leave it at that and let the players play i think that i think the week will be a good tell of kind of where saturday will be Dave, you mentioned after the Texas game that there was sort of a moment where you felt like the Texas defense was worn down and y'all were going to be able to take advantage. Was there a particular moment in the Oklahoma game where you felt the same way? No. And, you know, and I think you look at the numbers, it's probably, it's probably weird hearing that, I imagine. You look at the numbers after the game, I think, um, you know, I think defensively, the it was always trying to stay a step ahead I think the change of quarterbacks probably added to that in terms of what could come next and uh, the next move I think um, some of the formations and uh, adjustments that we were getting um, were tailor-made for us and so when we address those what comes next I think we're so or at least feel I was so locked into that, like, you know, you're trying to stay one step ahead of that piece right there. And then I think, you know, the ability for our offense to move the ball and control the ball a lot of time, I think they're, they, they're um, and our ability to to execute fairly well on third down helped that time go. It was one of those things before you know it, you, you look up and we're getting deep into it. Um, but uh, a lot of it was, you know, um, Here's what here's what they showed. Here's what we've taken away. Here's what they're going to. All right. Here's our adjustment. We're vulnerable here. Do they see it? Are they going to go to it? If they do, here's what we're doing. It's all those things. Chris Williams, KWTX News 10. Coach, some of these road games, you've looked like a completely different team. Is that something that you'll address in practice this week? And then also, are you looking to make any changes to the way you guys travel to try to fix that? I appreciate the question. I think, you know, um, I think energy is the is the big piece there. I think, I think for you know, one thing that we have tried to establish and you know um, have not been as successful as I'd like is that energy is not necessarily something that you catch; it's something that you create. I think when you catch it, you know, it can be good. It, it can also not be good. You know, if um, you walk into a room, people are at a job and they don't like their job, and all of a sudden you don't like it and you know, you just kind of catch that feeling, or you know, if it's a if it's a if it's a game and there's not a bunch of um, of uh, people cheering for you, or you know, there's not kind of an, an electric um, uh, current kind of praising your name, then all of a sudden I'm going to be down, right? And so I think for for you to um, leave yourself open to either the praise or criticism from the outside, I think is limiting, and so. You know, it is it is a fight to to get it coming from the inside out, and I think practice wise, um, one of the reasons why we don't play a ton of music during practice, and so that we create that on our own. Um, I think uh, the awareness of kind of where we've been, what we've done, uh, where we can improve, and what this moment means, I think is huge in that respect. And I think being real intentional about the practices and how they add up to a successful Saturday is everything. And so really looking forward to addressing that. Dave, Stephen Hawkins with the AP. And, and not to get back on the end of the game too much, I do want to ask, I know it got confusing when the fans and the students came on the field. Mm -hmm. It looked like on the TV uh, play that Jerry didn't understand what that you were trying to stop the clock. Mm -hmm. You talked about earlier that you do kind of prepare for things. So reviewing back and looking back, mm -hmm. is there anything you would have done differently about the way that game, the way it ended, and how you did the ending? And have you had a chance to talk to Lincoln yet? You said you hope to do that. Yeah, I think at the very end, um, I did not. You know, the if I if I would have anticipated 
our ref on the sideline working over the ball, I would have told him earlier what we were doing. I was going to go tell him what we were doing, and he had already worked over the ball. So I think I had to go somewhere on the field to kind of get get it addressed. And then I have um, made a call to Lincoln, and you know I'm sure we'll talk soon. Probably gonna have to keep that between us. I know as as um, as good as that would be for you all to probably hear about that, but we'll probably have to keep that just us. But I think you know, um, really, really, um, just going back to that game, just. Um, proud of our players, proud of our coaches, proud of our our fans, you know, the excitement of the fans and just, you know, so many pictures pl- our players have shared of um, just them interacting and having fun and just like and this is going to be a moment they're going to remember for a long time. And, you know, our aim obviously is to create some more like that. But um, I think it is it is when you do have something like that to – to take the time um, to recognize it is important. Thank you guys.